So I know I've talked about it before. I kind of want to say twice. I know for sure once I've talked about it, and that's going to be the uh, the ERM multi clock. I absolutely love that thing, but it's really expensive and not always available. So today I kind of want to go see at the local synth shop if I can find just a cheaper alternative that I guess does what it does, but it's totally not going to because this thing's pretty Swiss Army knife. But let's, I, I want to see if I can find an alternative. So uh, yeah, wish me luck. The multi clock is so unique. I know that it's 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 expensive and that's kind of the thing that's always makes me not recommend it to a lot of people even though i kind of still do but you know you kind of have to qualify who that's going to be for and i don't know who it's for because everybody hey quiet 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 i'm talking here everybody who i know who's um does that help who has it loves it but people who don't have it it's really expensive, like really pricey. I had to stop by one of my favorite burger spots on the way back. But on that drive, I actually think I kind of figured out who the multi-clock is not for. Um, because I ended up getting this. This is the Hosa USM422 track link and uh, if you get this you better uh, get linked and start tracking it's the most basic simple thing this thing has been around for ages i remember having one a long time ago having no idea what i was doing and i couldn't get it to work and i'm pretty sure i know exactly what i was doing wrong but we'll figure that out later so don't buy it a multi-clock if you just have a single sequencer and that's all you're trying to sequence to link up with your DAW. Or if you're synth or sequencer, all um, except MIDI over USB, because just use that. That's way better. That's all that the multi-clock is doing is separating the MIDI channels, allowing you to have finer control over each individual channel. But with something like this, if you just have a single synth or a single drum machine or a sampler or something like that, this essentially does the same thing. If you're trying to chain multiple products together one after another in like the same chain like this is going into an octa track then into a diggy tech then into a circuit then into a whatever then you might run into some issues and you might need to start separating those things um, then you might be able to buy multiples of these i don't know how that would work don't hold me to it but we'll check this out in a second but yeah if you don't need a multi-clock if you just have a single thing you're trying to sync up if you're just trying to send midi notes to something or if your device has MIDI over USB. If it's kind of old school and doesn't, yeah, the multi-clock, especially with multiple sequencers, would probably be pretty good. But I'm praying and hoping that this does the job. Well, uh, let me let me eat this food before it gets cold, and we'll uh, we'll try it out. Yeah, Frida, you want a French fry? You want a French fry? No, you can't eat French fries. Don't get excited. <laughs> Okay, so I figured I was gonna do this with the model cycles because it kind of has a perfect balance of, it has USB MIDI, it has um, five pin MIDI, and it's fairly affordable and cheap. So I'm hoping that, I don't know, because of that, it's of lesser quality. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, it kind of serves all the purposes of everything. So, oh crap, did I grab the USB? Damn it, I didn't grab the USB. One second. Okay, so let's try the USB mode first. It's the easiest, it's the simplest. You already know how this works. And basically, all I wanna do is record just like straight 16th hi-hats into uh, the arrangement mode in live and see how on the clock it is. And this is starting from the one because that also matters a lot um, because sometimes you gotta go back and fix that and depending on how much you gotta fix that, could be a lot or a little. So by default, first you want to do is knock your hat off when you put your headphones on. Classic. And then go into our settings. We'll say MIDI and boom, model cycles. And all we really want to worry about is sync. That's it for this because I don't want to send MIDI notes to it. Um, I'm just worried about clock information. 
actually, I guess really quick, if you want to worry about note information, no, I'll, I'll get that at the end. We got to do clock first. So cool. If I sync this, there's no MIDI plugged into here. When I press play, that should start running. Boom. That's exactly what we want. Let me unmute this. Okay, so let's say Wait, what the hell else is still playing? Oh, is my octatrack playing? Oops. Where are we at? We're on seven. So let's just do seven, eight. Get rid of everything except the multi clock because we're going to need that. Awesome. So now if I go to here and let me just go to a brand new pattern actually. So nothing here. Sweet. And yes, give me a ton of those. And of course I have it muted. Okay. So let's, let's try this out. I'm going to hit record. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. I need to uh, record arm first, hit record, turn the loop off. Let me turn this up a little bit. Also, my levels are way off. Please excuse my um, not professionalism. Okay, cool. So if we go and look at this, uh, we'll turn this record auto off. If we jump right into the beginning, you can already see it's off a little bit, but then pretty much consistently off by a specific amount. And there's an easy way to fix this. If you just select your clip, normally I'll kind of zoom in to the second bar, um, highlight, press Z. And if I just kind of highlight the section here between this, like here, let's do this and I'll zoom in again to get really detailed. If I highlight from where the note should have been, which is right here on the three, and go right up to where it starts, about there, if I hover over this blue area, it'll tell me how many milliseconds it's off right here. So 16. So I'll go back into my preferences, MIDI clock sync delay, and I'll just say minus 16. Boom, fixed. And this is all just with the USB. So now let's test this out. And I'll just do two bars that we're not here losing our mind. So we'll get rid of this clip and it is still perfectly off. Awesome. What are we doing? Options, reduce latency, delay compensation. So why is it not working? Maybe pattern. It should be sync and that should really be it. And see, this is what I'm saying. There's things like this that like the multi-clock just kind of works. But again, this is most likely user error. Oh, you know what? Let me try setting this to in and see what that does. So I know sometimes in auto and off changes things. Uh, oh, wow. Did, was that it? Yo, oh, I think that might have been it because it's auto that has to route it through Ableton's um, audio routing, but in is just straight monitoring, right? I think I saw some guitar guy talking about this at one point in time. Let me set it to auto again. Maybe we just cracked. Yeah, we just cracked the code. Look at that. Oh my God. No, we didn't. Okay. I literally have no idea what I just did, um, but it works now. Cool. Uh, you can see it's a little early again, not by much, but this will affect your kick drums and any kind of big bass lines. So you can see it's a millisecond early this time. I'm just going to go back in and set this to minus 15 instead. Actually, you know what? Let's do minus 14.5 just to be safe. Um, cool. Cool. Go back to the beginning. Auto is on. Let's see what that does. What in the world is happening? Hold up. Let me, uh-uh, done. Delete everything. Let me open up uh, live, regular live. I was in the beta. Maybe something wrong was happening in there. Okay. Now, where were we? So if I go and delete everything, uh, MIDI clock, electron sync. Okay. And we want to sync the output, not the input. 
So I've changed no settings on this whatsoever. Okay, we go uh, highlight this, we'll turn it back to auto. How far off are we? We'll zoom into here, zoom in a little more. I'm guessing this is about 16, uh, 10 now. See how much of a pain this can be? Thanks for sticking around if you've made it this far because this is boring. Let's go back and we'll see what this does now. It's set to auto. Okay, see, look, that put it on. That's dead on. Yeah, cool. So that's good. We're basically just not even one millisecond. It's not even registering as one millisecond. So that is fine. Um, but what I wanted to kind of look at was see if these are pretty on the whole time and see if there's any kind of like, it's called jitter where it kind of slows down, kind of speeds up once in a while. Um, but it's looking pretty good, especially if I were to go into the tempo here. Yeah, see, so this on the cycles, it just says external. I remember on like the Octatrack or some of the older electron machines, you can see it go from like 120 to 120.4, 120.5, 119.8, and it would constantly be moving. But I don't know if they've fixed that or if they've hid that by just having it say external, but it looks pretty good. You know, this isn't gonna kill anybody. So now let's try this ugly ass cable Perfect time for the holidays. HOSA USM422 version 2.1, AOL version 7.0. Uh, plug that in. Okay, it's a good sign, little red dot. So this is, I've had one of these before. I think it was by someone else, Korg or something like that. But I think it, I was getting confused because the cables say in and out and you would expect to plug this to the input and this to the output, but I think it's the opposite. So I think I want the output of this cable to go to the input of the model cycles. Does that make sense? Um, it's not necessarily labeling it. Let's see if that even works. Does it register? Okay, USB 2.0 port one port two? What? Uh, let's sync one, see what happens. Okay, and then let's sync two, see what happens. Oh, external. What? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What just happened? What are we doing? What am I looking at? Okay, the sequencer runs there. But if I press play there, the sequencer doesn't run. What about both of them? Huh? Oh, hold on. I think I have some setting on here. We'll go MIDI, sync, clock in, on. Yeah. What the hell? So then why is it not working? It's receiving a time and it's plugged in all the way. So let me, let me try this. So I'm, I'm having the out of this adapter going to the in of this, which in my head kind of makes sense. Yeah, see, that doesn't register at all. So that was correct. The only other thing I can think of is that this adapter is a different standard. This is the Novation one. I know that one's made to standard, but the old circuit ones, the colored ones, those aren't to standard. I have one of those, one second. All right, so these uh, cables, like these kind of yellow for the mono station are not to standard. And basically what that means is inside a, a five pin MIDI DIN, you're only really using three cables, which is why they can use these, which are TRS. There's three points of connection. But when a lot of companies were switching from five pin to eighth inch, nobody really sat down at a table and was like, hey, Korg, Arturia, Novation, Roland, let's all agree on what tip ring sleeve, which one of the three cables is it gonna be in here? So uh, polarity's got switched. Now there's a standard though, so um, we don't have to deal with that anymore. But let's see, so I wanna go out to the in. See what that does. Okay, so I'm, <laughs> what is going on? What? Does this thing not work? Am I tripping right now? 
Let me just turn all these on. It's receiving external information on either the standard or not standard version of cycles, but it's not playing anything? Really? Okay, let me try this. I'm gonna set this to really slow. Okay, that is, okay, oh, I, I don't, I think, I think the cycles is built to standard. I wouldn't put it past Electron to not figure that out before making this thing. Let's see, cool dude. Midi in. I have no idea what's going on. What? Let me try plugging in this uh, USM422 directly into my Mac Mini. Let's try this now, because that was freaking out. I don't want to track anything coming in. That's going. It's receiving something. It's receiving something weird, though. And let me try this one more time. I don't know what is going on with this cable. Okay, so yeah, it's definitely not that. It's definitely this. And then this. Yeah, look, it's receiving. You see that? It's receiving something. But it is straight tripping. There's nothing. Uh, POSA USM422 driver it's not class compliant or something where to buy amazon blah 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 procedures specifications osx 10.6 newer yep that's what i'm on bus power supports up to 16 channels yeah i know what are what are procedures then oh come on dude i don't want to do this <sighs> generic let's just call this Hosa four two two. Yeah, what the heck? Sync. Let's try pattern. Ah, oh, I heard something. Yo, what is going on? Listen to this. Again, this is why the ERM kind of just works. Something weird is happening, and I literally have no idea what. It wants to go. What in the world? Are we witnessing this? This is like some poltergeist. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have to give this host a thing zero stars, but uh, affiliate link down below if you wanna go buy it for some crazy reason. If you wanna drive yourself nuts, by all means, please do. Let me try this one more time. Tina, how do I keep doing that? Dude, are we witnessing this? Okay, um, well, that, as you can see, that's how good the HOSA did. Awesome. Now let's go, ah, you know what? This will be good. Uh, this is, I just need to grab this mini cable really quick. Now let's, tr now we'll really be able to figure out if it's this thing. Watch, the multi-clock is gonna do the same thing and I'm just gonna put my foot in my mouth. Actually, maybe I won't, that's too freaky for YouTube. We'll go into port four. Okay, so port four on. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. This thing, uh, I don't know, I guess that's what you get for 25 bucks. I was honestly really hoping that this would work because when it comes to the multi-clock, I want to recommend it to some people but a lot of times people will hit me up being like, hey, I'm just trying to connect 
like my SP404, or I'm trying to connect my DigiTact, or some simple groove box, do I need a multi-clock? And the answer is no, please do not buy it. But I've, I've never really had a cheaper alternative. Actually, that's a full-blown lie. I have had a cheaper alternative and I really liked it. It was called the Midi Man 2x2 or the Midi Sport 2x2. Um, I have a link to it down below. Also, check the back of your audio interface. You probably have a MIDI jack on there, so you don't need this at all. IK Multimedia makes them. I know Roland makes a very similar cable. I don't know if it's any better or since transport control. There's a ton of other options. Um, I have my favorite cheap alternative link down below. I was just hoping that this one, being the cheapest, would work. I was hoping that this would work because this is like the cheapest thing I could find, but I guess you kind of get what you pay for. Maybe this is just intended for MIDI notes, like MIDI uh, note information, not so much clock information. I could be wrong. I haven't tested it for that now, and I'm not going to test it because I'm already over that thing. I have what works. And um, yeah, don't buy a MIDI uh, multi-clock if your device has USB capabilities. Really simple. You saw how easy it was to do that. And don't buy a multi-clock if you just want to send note information to whatever um, device you're using because you can just do that in Ableton. And actually, you know what? I might as well show you this because we already know the multi-clock works. I already know that the USB works fine enough for clock information that I don't need to really dive into the multi-clock and why if it's if it's any more stable or anything like that because that was that was good enough you know it ain't it ain't hurting anybody but let's see if i can actually just quickly send note information to this thing and i want to show you how i handle that information here um, when there's latency so let's go back into our midi settings and here you know what? i'm just gonna unplug this thing it's frustrating to look at so the usb for the model cycles class compliant thank you very much plug that pupper in boom it already pops up with all our old settings minus nine but track is what we want to be able to send note information to the model cycles so not just um, sequencer information so if i go to a new pattern there's nothing here liar okay now there's nothing here so if I go to our MIDI track here and I say, where do I want to send MIDI to? Electron model cycles and I'll turn on key mode. Okay, sweet. Why don't I hear any of that? Oh, oops, my bad. Okay, cool. So let's say I have a MIDI clip, just a simple loop here. We'll create a new MIDI clip and zoom out. Sure. I'll just say boom, 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 boom. And I will set this to loop. Oh, my bad. Let me go back into a uh, bit of a geezer mode here. All right, so loop is on. I can just drag this out and loop that. But let's see if the audio is getting recorded properly. There's a couple ways to do this. So what we want ideally is our MIDI notes and the um, information. Oh man, I hate when I turn the keys thing on. What we want to happen is that our notes and our sounds to line up and you can see that they do not, right? So this is not what we want. Again, we can either go like this see what the latency is again minus nine and this is the audio being routed through ableton but first receiving notes from ableton so it kind of adds a bunch of weird latency this is completely different from clock uh, latency this is note latency i'm not sure if that's the proper term again not an, not a scientist regular nerd you already know this the way we can handle this is there's this d here in the corner if we turn that on you have a track delay and that can also show up here. So if I go and open up the MIDI track and I'll just call this Cycles MIDI. If I hit this little D here, track delay, I can delay this track as a whole by nine milliseconds. And the same thing applies here. So now if we were to go and record again, let me turn follow off and we'll see what happens when this note gets here. 
Boom, look at that. Ba-bow, almost perfectly on. Again, about one millisecond, that's okay for me. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it that I've kind of been doing, which is a bit of a pain, but it kind of works. You just have to like remember a bunch more things later is if you go to instruments and you use an external instrument, right now this MIDI track literally has nothing on it. All it's doing is routing MIDI from Ableton to the cycles, that's it. But if I say external instrument, it's gonna change all those settings. And now here I say MIDI two, where's the MIDI gonna go to? It's gonna go to our model cycles. And where's the audio coming from? It's gonna come from seven and eight, which is where I have this plugged into our patch bay. Then this is very important, set this to off. And this is what I was telling you about earlier with the guitar guy is if you have this set to in or auto, it's still routing the audio through Ableton, which is creating latency and it's recording the audio post basic Ableton processing. It's not gonna record it with the effects you have in the channel, but it's just recording it after it's gone through Ableton before it hits Ableton's effects, if that even makes sense. If I have this set to off, this will record directly from the interface and the uh, latency should be gone. So this track has zero milliseconds this is zero milliseconds, and this is set to in. Let's record this and see where our latency falls. I'll zoom into this section. Oh, come on. Whoa, 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 okay. Here's the other thing. Because you have an external instrument, it's gonna let you hear the audio monitor it by default. So you can hear it's all crazy doubled and stuff like that, but you see immediately how insanely off this is. That's because the external instrument plugin that Ableton uses actually provides hardware latency right into it. Like it, it, it compensates for itself. And that's why I like using this because I can just have this track, which is audio from the model cycles off. And I can still hear, like I can just delete this track if I wanted. And I can still hear the model cycles and I can still go in and add some more notes if I wanted. Right? Cool. Um, and again, when I'm ready to export this song, this is where external instruments suck. They have to bounce in real time. So the way I like to use them is I will just open up an audio track and I'll say, take audio from this track. Don't take audio from seven and eight. If I take audio from cycles MIDI, and this set to off, when I record this now, it's gonna be dead on, watch. You know what, let me speed up this tempo. This is too slow, 100. Um, record. Dun, dun. Okay, so now if we go and zoom in into this, look at that. That's like basically dead on. Two milliseconds, that's okay. You can still add a little bit of hardware latency here if you want, but this is great because now when I'm done with this patch, I can go in here and just, you know, change up the sound. And now I can just save this clip for later and change up some MIDI notes in here, do this a couple times, one of these bad boys, grab this and put that here. And now I can go and record new sounds. Let's see what this sounds like. Right, you see what I'm saying? And I still have my old sounds that I recorded and all this, and I don't have to bounce it in real time because that gets really annoying. And another thing you might be wondering is, oh, how about you just freeze and flatten this? Same thing, completely takes me out of the vibe. We gotta wait for five seconds or we can skip. Then we gotta do this, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool, so sweet. Okay, so now I have no idea what I was just doing. But now, cool, we have this, it's, it's frozen, then we can flatten this. Cool, it turned it to audio, but now it's like uh, all these individual clips. Sure, we get the tails of things, but now I can no longer send MIDI to this thing. I have to do the external instrument thing again and again and again and again. So this method, I do not like at all. But I do like that, oh no, I lost it. I do like, there it is, that the external instrument handles note latency 
pretty damn good for me. So that's what I've been using lately is that in a track and then I tell the track to take audio from that specific track, not the external input seven and eight. Because if we were to do this, look how horrendous this is. This is not good. No bueno, look at this. Oh, look at that. That ratchet sound starts here. It's, what is that? 56 milliseconds early. That's how much latency as a whole Ableton is kind of compensating. Another thing that really helps really quick before I roll out of here, delay compensation under options, as well as reduced latency when monitoring. Yeah, does that make sense? Save your money, don't buy a multi-clock unless, unless you have tons of sequencers that you are trying to sequence or tons of things that require MIDI note information. For example, for me, I'm using a lot of synths right now, the Nord and the Pro 3. These are kind of like my three things, Peak, Nord, Pro 3, and then the Octatrack. And do I have anything here? No. Oh yeah, I had this uh, little, this little sculpty thing. Not bad, this thing's actually pretty tight. But basically not a lot besides the Octatrack needs clock information, but I've been using this here, the Microcosm, the hologram, a lot. And this is perfect when you sync it up with MIDI. So that can take channel two, Octatrack is channel one. If I wanna do some sequencer stuff on the Pro 3, that's channel three. And I have independent latency compensation for each of those without having to buy three of these host of things that don't work or relying on USB, which the hologram does not have, I don't think. The Octatrack doesn't have. The Pro 3 does have, but I can't reach it with USB because my USB hub's all the way over here and the Pro 3 is all the way over here. So that's where the multi-clock comes in mega handy for me. And the other thing to note is when you're trying to sync up a ton of boxes in a long chain, you can run into MIDI latency issues down the line, especially when each thing has different latency amounts when it comes to going through your audio interface. In a live setting where you're performing live, you won't hear it that much, but you can hear it pretty bad when it comes to um, Ableton Live stuff and you're trying to record audio into different channels with different effects, all live monitoring and stuff like that. So um, yeah, uh, I wouldn't recommend this thing. I, you saw here, live action, did not work. Could be user error. Please, somebody, if you have this thing and you're using it for clock information, let me know down below so I can pin your comment and let people know that it does work. Um, if your thing has USB, just use USB. That's it for me. I just kind of wanted to talk about some latency stuff because I deal with it all the time and there's a million, million ways. Um, yeah, this is your friend, MIDI here. Make sure you can change your clock information here for how much latency you need or if you're dealing with note information which is this this is not sequencer i'm not running the sequencer this is note information i deal with that with the external instrument or delaying that specific midi track by however much the audio is late we want these parts to line up this note here should have been there uh, yeah anyway good to see you as always i hope to see you again in the next one and uh, I appreciate you kicking it. Till then, um, yeah, have a good one. And uh, happy new year. All right, peace. How sick is this song? Can we make this into something? Can this be salvaged? No, that, that cannot. What do I got on here? Anything good? All right. What's here? Ow, my 